Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. Sam, I be the Ganji doing commentary here for the media speaks. Um, I wanted to address something real quick when I put something uh, when I put something out here. There's been some ambiguity, I guess, regarding the name of the show. New viewers, welcome aboard. No, it is not the uh, correct views because I am an, an egomaniac. The correct views actually it makes fun of the show, the view, because all of their... Uh, I can't see myself. Thank you. All of their, um, their views are, if anything, absolutely incorrect. And they're almost always on the more extreme Democrat side. That is not to say that I am against classic liberalism. But uh, modern liberalism is absolutely insane in every possible way. So, I try to address these things sort of the view, the correct views. The other thing I want to mention is all of my, my news is sourced. It, I'm not sure that microphone is on, Christelle, or I'm not sure we have audio on there. All of my opinions are sourced. So, I mean, they're not even... Sure, it's blinking. They're not even so much um, sources as... Uh, opinions as they are sources. And as uh, Christelle fixes the... Oh, good, we are... Okay, I wanted to make sure we have audio on the high def. As we, we go into these topics, I think it's important for you to know that they're sourced. So it doesn't matter whether you like me or not. I hope you do. Welcome aboard. I have nothing against you. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'm kidding, but you know what I'm saying. Everything here is sourced. So, I mean, listen to the show. Clean your house. There's no need to watch me unless, of course, I bring some demonstration on. Clean your house. Do what it is that you're doing. Drive in your car. I'm going to give you the news, and I'm going to give you my commentary on it as best I can with facts to back up what I'm saying that I source out like I'm going to do now. This is RT, June 2nd, 2015. A little bit of a, a, a microphone glitch there. Christelle, bam, fixed it in two minutes. Good job. U.S. releases video of Russian jets encounter with U.S. warship in the Black Sea. Said the incident is the latest in a series of border surveillance confrontations between Russia and the West. This is not good, friends, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to date myself here, unfortunately. When I was growing up, it was common to believe that Russia was going to nuke us, that it was all over, we were as good as dead. A lot of that died away thanks to two very forward-thinking, and I don't mean Obama's kind of forward, two very forward-thinking and very intelligent, God-fearing, I might say, peaceful-minded people. One of them was Ronald Reagan, and one of them was, thankfully, Mikhail Gorbachev. Since then... The actions of Clinton and Bush is, is, is more than one. Um, the nightmare that has unfolded since then. Obama, NATO. We promised Russia when America won the Cold War that there were a few things that we would never do. And one of them was to put missile sites near their country that would imply that we were trying to overtake them. Now, longtime listeners of this show know that I am no fan of Vladimir Putin. You don't trust Obama, Mr. CIA, then why are you trusting Vladimir Putin, Mr. KGB? It's the same thing. It's this, the Russian version. So, what I'm trying to point out here, I think more than anything, is that this problem was solved and we have allowed it to become more of a problem and Putin is not without his provocations that he brings to us which is also true um, we had no business in the Ukraine you hear that from many libertarian constitutional freedom-minded people such as myself and that is true 
at the same time, Russia had no business in the Ukraine. Because while historically, people like to say, historically the Ukraine was part of Russia. Well, historically, America owns slaves. And you know what? I'm glad we don't anymore. Uh, historically, my ass, the Ukraine is a free nation. And if America has no business meddling in there, which I agree with, I would say proudly, then neither does Russia. And if the Ukrainian people cannot decide to be Ukrainian instead of being Russian or instead of being part of the European Union or instead of subscribing to what is actually neo-Nazism, modern fascism, if you will, then they're part of the problem as well. And I think people miss that. I think that Obama, and hear me out, really, really hear this. I think Obama is such a terrible president and he is, that people somehow miss the fact that so is Putin. I think they miss that the Ukrainian people themselves have no idea it is which direction they want to go in. Instead of embracing being Ukrainian, why can't they do that? And I think all three of those things, Obama, Putin, and their lack of uh, individual identity as a nation, have led to this. Lack of sovereignty, if you will. Desire for sovereignty, even. The U.S. Sixth Fleet has made public a video which is described as showing the Russian jet interaction with the USS Ross warship in the Black Sea on May 30th. Uh, there's going to be a video up right back here. I'm still waiting for all of the cables and that to arrive from Amazon. Uh, I, for one, wouldn't mind seeing drones used for that, by the way. The description of the video on the Navy Sixth Fleet website says that both were operating in international waters and airspace. USS Ross continued on her mission after observing the aircraft return to base. At no time did Ross act aggressively, nor did she deviate from her planned operations. The conduct of her crew has been and continues to be professional. Ross's sailors observed the SU-24 carried no weapons. Wings were clean, the statement said. However, according to a source in the Russian Armed Forces cited by RIA Novosti News Agency, quote, the crew of the ship acted provocatively and aggressively, which concerned the operators of monitoring stations and ships of the Black Sea Fleet. That was the reason why the Russian jet had to be scrambled to warn off the ship near Russia waters, the source says. Saturday's incident is the latest in a series of border surveillance confrontations between Russia and the U.S. This sounds like a report from the 80s. How did we as a people allow this to denigrate so far? And you can argue that people, man, they only care about top 40, man. They don't care about the world. Maybe. Okay, maybe. Look at me. I... As people in my commentary line love to tell me, I am not the greatest political commentator that ever lived. So let me ask you something. Why did somebody with long hair, somebody like me that loves heavy metal, loves industrial, loves punk, loves swing, big band, uh, I'm a nerd, loves card games or role-playing games, I got tattoos, why is it? that I somehow, through all of this, I DJ in a strip club. How is it that I'm somehow able to learn these things and care about what's going on around me? I'm not some saint. I hope you don't think that I am because you're going to be miserably disappointed. How is it that I care enough about this? So you can't tell me that the media in top 40 dumbs down people. Let me ask you something. Is there is there something in our school system that is taking kids' souls away? Because we don't have anybody that cares. And don't just blame the youth. I'm not one of those people. My generation sucked. And Generation Y sucks. Why? Because we're like the first generations to really go ahead and not care at all what's happening around us 
or allow ourselves to care, but care in the wrong direction, which I would argue is what Black Lives Matter do. They don't see that the division, for instance, that blacks and whites are experiencing is caused by the government because they want this kind of division in order for their solution to be more control over us all. This is obvious by the rise of the abuse of SWAT teams, by the way. Um, they don't see that. So, of course, you know, you've got segments that care. You've got people that will protest Bilderberg, but they won't protest the fact that the government is creating divisions between whites and blacks, to go back to what I just said. He said, all ties together. Well, I worry very much that our generations, my generation, X, of course, and Y, behind me, there's something wrong here. The millennials, for that matter, they don't care about the world around them. And this isn't to say that the baby boomers were any good. Because the baby boomers, I always like to say that my generation, and this is why you tune in for commentary, my generation is the reason that your bank teller has an eyebrow piercing. And she counts your money right and does an amazing job. My generation is the reason you have the internet. However, we had the world by the cojones, and what did we do? We sold out quicker than the yuppies did. Not me, but as a generation as a whole. I hate my generation. Well, the baby boomers were the yuppies. The baby boomers made a bigger splash and a bigger ability to change than the Gen Xers did in the 90s with what the baby boomers did in the 60s. They gave us Hillary Clinton. They gave us every president that we have had since JFK. And every president that we have had since JFK has been abysmal. Am I saying that the decline of America started with the baby boomers? To some degree, but only, not because the baby boomers were bad people, but because World War I and World War II were abysmal for the country. It took fathers away. It damaged the minds, hearts, souls, and spirit of the men who fought those two wars. And then, of course, Koreans soon after it. By then, the damage had already been done. While they were out fighting wars, the baby boomers were not raised the way that they should have been in the 30s and 40s because of the wars. Korean War, 50s, 60s, Vietnam, onward. And I think that lack of parenting created who the baby boomers were. Not because the World War I and World War II generations failed. They did not fail. They defended liberty to the best that they could. But because they were defending liberty, they were drugged from their homes for a very long time. And in the process, a lot of very nefarious people got into power, and I think we're paying for that in every way. And uh, again, it can't, it can't be overstated that that's resulted in what we have now, but we do still have now. And we can all band together, or we can continue to be really crappy to each other, and we can continue to have our nation go further down the drain. And this isn't some call to action, because if you're not already doing something that is some kind of action, then I would argue that you are already part of the problem. You think my video sucks? Great, go make a video. video. Post it. Do something. Uh, SHTFplan.com. This is bad, too. How about if you had to have insurance to speak freely? Well, you would say that the right to free speech is a God-given right, according to the Constitution. If, of course, you were inclined to even bother to know what it said. Well, if it's a God-given right, your First Amendment, your Second Amendment, which is also a God-given right, the right to bear arms. Well, listen to this. This is from Max Slavo. New bill aims to rewrite. Re, 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 New bill aims to rewrite Second Amendment, and it would require gun owners to have liability insurance. Now you now need insurance on a God-given right. Pretty soon you'll need insurance to own a Bible. 
it could catch fire at any moment. A wayward candle that you burn for your friend hits the Bible. Bible catches fire. You need first, need first Amendment insurance, I guess. I don't know. New York House Representative Carolyn Maloney has introduced a new bill that would force gun owners to have liability insurance or face fines of up to $10,000. According to Maloney, the stipulations of the Firearm Risk Protection Act would curb violence, much like car insurance has lowered vehicle fatalities because gun owners would be more careful. First of all, driving is not a God-given right. Second of all, I would argue that at no point, and I think most freedom-minded people would agree with me, libertarians, constitutionalists, leave me a comment here, I challenge you that they would agree with me that rather than me having to have car insurance in case I hurt you because I go, you know, wreck my car in an accident, isn't it up to every individual to get insurance on themselves so that if something happens, it is paid for? How did we end up living in a country that's supposed to be standing for individualism, a, uh, a light upon a hill, if you will, when we require insurance to drive instead of requiring, well, not requiring, but instead of allowing people to insure themselves to whatever degree that they feel is necessary? And if, if you think I'm nuts for saying that about car insurance, then you're part of the problem because you're part of why it's okay now to do it with health insurance, which of course is the nightmare that is Obamacare, which has ruined insurance for everyone. How do I know that? I had wonderful insurance until Obamacare. Now I have eh, insurance. Listen to this, bonehead. We require insurance to own a car, but no such requirement exists for guns. And that's another nightmare. And Maloney said this in a statement. What's another nightmare? Because I have a lot of people I know that have been hit with insurance lottery while they're fixing a car that they have no intent on driving, and yet they're supposed to insure it while they're fixing it up to sell it and never drive it. That's, that's what freedom is in this country. It says the results are clear. Car fatalities have declined by 25% in the last decade, but gun fatalities continue to rise. That is not true, by the way. Gun fatalities have gone down, and if you factor out uh, gun violence due to gangs, there is very little gun violence in the country compared to past generations. That is fact, whether you like that I said it or not. It's not my opinion. It's actual fact. Look it up. Maloney said auto insurance carriers incentivize drivers to take precautions to reduce accidents, but no such incentives exist for firearm owners. An insurance requirement would allow the free market to encourage cautious behavior and help save lives, she said. Adequate liability coverage would also ensure that the victims of gun violence are fairly compensated when accidents or crimes do occur. It says the likelihood that insurance policies are responsible for the 25% drop in car fatalities is almost zero. That is not why it's happened. Why has there been less car fatalities due to accidents? Is it because of insurance? No. According to Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, there's your source, People with even a smidgen of common sense, it's probably more likely that improved vehicle design and safety features are responsible for the large increase. Why would I do commentary on this and tell you it's true? Because I've lived through it. I'll give you one story that happened to me firsthand. Uh, those of you in Canton, Ohio, will can verify that I'm telling the truth here. There was a car coming down Walnut Avenue, which is one way headed uh, south. And there was another street called 9th Street, which I was on, which was heading west. The light changed for me. The lady, unfortunately, ran the light as I had already accelerated and hit the car. The car flipped on its side and my car hit it kind of half and bounced off. I got out of my car with nothing more than sore shoulders from holding myself back. The light had just changed. Thank God I hadn't been going that fast. Just fast enough, unfortunately, not to stop. And uh, 
the, the SUV, you know, went on it, uh, the, the, the Astro Van, I should say, whatever it was. I don't know what make it was. Minivan. It went on its side. And there had been, uh, unfortunately, a baby crying, which terrified me. So the officer, and uh, who by dumb luck was on the other side of 9th Street, headed what would be east, saw the accident. Um, the back window had busted out of the minivan. So he went in and grabbed the newborn, or not newborn, baby, excuse me. And I went in and helped the person out, the teenager. And then there was a mother who was driving. And unfortunately, she was sighted. Uh, I, I didn't do anything. I'm not glad she was sighted. She wasn't drunk or anything. It's just a mistake. It happens. No hard feelings. Um, everybody in the car was okay, including the baby. No injuries whatsoever. I wasn't seat belted. I had just gone, got gas and had not seat belted up. The teenager was not seat belted. I knew this. I didn't say it to the police. They said he was, and I just shushed it because I don't think the police have any business bothering somebody with their own decisions, with their own health. My point being that in that horrible accident, thank God and all the saints alive, we were all okay. Again, it's a structural repair. Auto, her having auto insurance didn't have anything to do with that. I was driving a Crown Vic, by the way. I was a cab driver. It happened to me while I was driving. It says, they found that vehicle changes, including improved structural designs, the addition of safety features, and an evolving mix of vehicle types were the main source of declining risk from 93 to 06. It says, common sense goes out the window with politicians. You have to remember that the gun violence in this country has gone down. And you also, I would say, must remember that we are a nation that has a God-given right to self-defense. And far more lives are saved on any given week due to people with guns stopping violence on innocent people, be it themselves or someone else, than there are the number of people who lose their lives due to somebody breaking the law with a gun. And if you don't like that I said it, it's fine. You can hate me all you want to. I'm sure I'll hear about it, but it doesn't matter. It is absolute statistical fact. Um, New York Daily News com. This is a huge, huge win, and I'm going to tell you why. Walmart to raise wages for some employees starting in July and promises $10 minimum by 2016. All of you know I hate Walmart. I don't go to Walmart unless it's absolutely imperative. I have absolutely no choice whatsoever. Um, for instance, they sell bait there. A, um, a few years ago, I had owned a toad, and I ran out of food for the poor toad, so I went to Walmart and bought worms. It absolutely has to be something where if it's not imperative, if it's not life or death for the animal, for instance, or at least a night of hunger and misery, I'm not going. I don't like the way they do business. I don't like what they've done to local businesses in the area by scoping out an area before they moved in, finding out what sold there well in terms of local businesses, and then forcing the manufacturers to undercut that sell it to them at a lower cost than they would other people, otherwise Walmart wouldn't carry it. And then, of course, the lower price shut down the locally owned business, and then Walmart raised the price to whatever they wanted on the business that they just manipulated, and now they've got the contract to sell the other item cheaper. That kind of thing. I detest Walmart. But we're making a, an inroad here. Um, let's remember that um, Walmart paying low rates, you might say, well, Sam, you're the crappiest libertarian ever because if you were a real libertarian, you would support the Walmart doing whatever it wants. The trouble with Walmart is they are leading the charge in welfare in this country. And it is welfare among the people that I don't have a problem with getting it. What do I mean by that? If we're going to have a wel wel welfare system in the way that we do now, and I would argue that we shouldn't, but that's another topic for another day. If we're going to have the 
situation, the welfare system set up as we do, then I think it would be imperative to give it to the people who are working as hard as they can and are still needing our help, or the people that are not able to work at all, and of course, you know, MRDD, cancer, that kind of thing. Um, Walmart, by paying such low wages, are creating the kind of poverty that leads to a need for welfare, even among people who are working as hard as they can and for as many hours as they can at Walmart. So them doing this is a massive win for common sense to anybody who would claim to be a libertarian. Listen to this. And this is what libertarianism is. It is refusing to allow huge corporations and anyone else to walk over us without saying we've had enough, we won't take it. Which is what we did here, and guess what? Now they're going to raise the rates because they want us to come back to their crappy store. Walmart is raising starting wages of more than 100,000 U.S. department managers and workers in its deli and other specialized departments. Do you realize that if even half of those people don't need welfare anymore, that's 50,000 people? Do you realize what a big win this is? The moves mark the next wave of wage hikes by the nation's largest private employer, and might I add the largest burden on the welfare system of the U.S. by proxy, have been under pressure from labor-backed groups. There's links in this New York Daily News article for the treatment of its workers. In February, it announced it was increasing minimum wages from entry-level and long-term hourly employees to at least 10 bucks by the next February. That increase affected 500,000 of its 1.3 million workers. Half of that, if they don't need to be on welfare, is 250,000 people, friends. Do you realize that the wage hikes are part of a $1 billion program at Walmart that also includes improving training and offering employees more control of their schedules? Do you realize that we have changed one of the beasts and tamed it just a little bit. And if we keep pushing, then we'll at least make it so that Walmart is not something that all of us have to pay for in our taxes due to welfare, whether or not we shop there or not. Friends, got three stories left to correct views. I want to invite you in real quick. A major sponsor of the show and somebody that I am delighted to have as a sponsor, D Lake, member of the MediaSpeaks.com, also is a part owner of Sticker Junkie. And Sticker Junkie makes awesome stickers. These are our band stickers. Look at them. They're wicked looking. And the correct views at Hotmail.com if you want one. Um, Paul Revere stickers. Freedom stickers. Sticker, StickerJunkie.com. When you, when you put your order in, make sure you put in the comment line, Attention D. Lake. And let David Lake know that you heard about Sticker Junkie on the correct views, and you'll get a huge discount. Friends, um, this is brought to you by Mike McLaughlin, this next story here from CNSNews.com. If you don't know who Mike McLaughlin is, you're missing out. Uh, look him up on Facebook.com. McLaughlin, L-A-U-G-H-L-I-N. And you'll find political commentary, poetry. You'll find short stories. You'll find whole novels. Uh, those I think he's selling. Make sure you go and look him up and make sure he knows you heard about it from the correct views, too. Again, CNSNews.com, Iran's Ayatollah, U.S. and Israel support the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. Crowd, chants, death to America, death to England, and death to Israel. All right, let me ask you a question real quick. Even if you're someone who thinks that Iran should be allowed to have a nuclear power plant because Israel has one. Even if you're somebody that thinks that Iran should be allowed to have a nuclear power plant, even though the same wise people that warned you about Fukushima happening are the same people who are warning you now about Iran in that very spot experiencing an earthquake which will, of course, kill more Arabs than 10 billion Jews with flamethrowers. Um, when they melt this plant down, even if you don't think uh, they should be barred from owning it because Israel has it and because, of course, the earthquake's going to melt it down, even if you're in favor of all of that, do you realize that the people who are listening to the Ayatollah 
the leader of Iran, I might add. The crowd is chanting, death to America, death to England, and death to Israel. If that's the case, then might I ask you, would you be alarmed if maybe you were in Canada? Any listeners in Canada? What if we were opening a nuclear power plant right on the border, where we have some on the border, but we're going to pretend universe here. We're going to open this plant, and you think that we might want to harm you with it, Canadians, but no, nah, we say we're not going to. Of course, when President Obama speaks, people in the crowd start chanting, Death to Canada! Death to Canada! Hey, Death to Canada! Hey, might you be a little bit alarmed? Now, you could argue that America, and Ron Paul has mentioned this, and I think he's right, America has brought some of this upon ourselves based upon a foreign policy. However, even if we change our foreign policy, these people are going to want to kill us for what we've already done. You could argue we haven't done anything. If that's what you believe, that's fine. But they still want to kill us then for what we haven't done. Therefore, for the fact that they do want to kill us, and they're chanting it as their president speaks, due to the fact that we know that there's going to be a massive earthquake there before the end of that nuclear power plant's existence, and because we know that there are large elements in the government which would like to use this as a dirty bomb, as mentioned in previous shows, might it be a good idea to maybe not be so happy about Iran getting a nuclear power plant? And you want to ask why I think that Obama is the worst president ever. With less than a month to go before the June 30th, and it's coming closely, it's, it's a bit dated, deadline for talks between Iran and P5 plus 1 nations, which of course the U.S., Great Britain, France, Germany, China, and Arusha, on an agreement to restrict Iran's ability to develop a nuclear weapon, Iran's supreme leader, the Ayatollah Saeed al-Khomeini, gave a televised speech in which he stated that the United States and Israel support the Islamic State and all of Al-Qaeda. Now, unfortunately, that is true. He's right. I'm not just going to talk about the things that Iran does wrong without being fair. He's right about that. Um... But there are some things he says here that he's entirely not right upon at all. Um, but let's get to some of the other ones he is right about. But here's what worries me. On occasions, the crowd chanted, God is great, God is great, God is great. Humani is the leader. Death to anti-supreme jurist consult. Death to America. Death to England. Death to hypocrites and non-believers. Death to Israel. Now, pause. Let's just focus on one thing they said because it is the one thing that everyone listening to my voice who is not a jihadist will agree with Hillary Clinton listeners I don't know how you found this show but welcome aboard you're about to agree with me here death to non-believers that means whether or not American foreign policy is wonderful or terrible, whether or not you are in favor of our foreign policy or you are not, death to all non-believers of Islam. Do you still want them to get this power plant? This is their own words. This is the chant that they gave to their president. And this is the chant that their president, their leader, did not stop. This is why I don't want them to have a nuclear power plant. Don't give me this BS about what America did to them. Death to non-believers. Okay, they already said death to America. They already said death to England. Death to anyone who is not Islamic. Yeah, let's give them a nuclear power plant. That's a remarkable idea. You cannot give me the argument that Israel has one. Israel is not chanting death to people who are not Jewish. D 
don't give me the analogy because it doesn't hold any water. It was immediately after one of the Death to America chants that the Ayatollah made the declaration that the United States and Israel support the Islamic State and Al-Qaeda. And that is true, unfortunately. America is part of the problem, but that is not a reason to give them a nuclear power plant. <sighs> Absolutely awful. Again, he, 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 he praises the original Ayatollah for calling America the great Satan and said that America didn't keep its promises. None of that matters. It's true. And fortunately, it's true. Ask Putin. But remember, death to non-believers. Whether or not he's right about American foreign policy, that's not what they're chanting. It says, Iran may face many of the same decision points in 2015 as it did in 14. Foremost is whether the Supreme Leader will agree to a nuclear deal. He wants sanctions relief, but at the same time preserves options on nuclear capabilities. As he chants death to everyone listening to this who is not Islamic, and by that they mean they're kind of Islamic. Death to all of you. Let's, let's give that person a nuclear power plant. Maybe you're one of my people, you hate this show. You freaking hate this show and you hate me. Doesn't matter. Unless you're their kind of Islamic, they want you dead. They chanted it in front of their leader, and their leader didn't stop them. Uh, two more stories to get to real quick, because we have gone just a wee bit long here. Nuclear missiles could be sighted again on British soil in new Cold War with Russia. I was going to put this in with the other story, but some people hate the Russia stuff, so I'd put it at the end. Uh, you don't want to miss the dumb of the day, though. It's next. For those of you that understand the importance of the Russia thing, you're very glad that I'm still talking about it. Foreign Secretary Philip Hammond says there are worrying signs about the increased activity of Russian forces and the UK would consider the pros and cons of taking U.S. immediate range weapons. This is a return to a 